Hi, this is Psalms Part 2, the book of Psalms Part 2, Psalm 16 now. Father God, show us the things that you would want us to believe about the book of Psalms. In Christ's name, amen. It says here, a mictum of David, the little subscription note there, the mictum. Mictum is a prayer or meditation there. David is praying or meditating on some truth here. Now, we look at verse 1, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. That's Messiah Jesus talking there. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 13. Those, the, psalm 16 is messianic. It's a messianic psalm. See, you, you do verse comparisons and you can see this is Messiah. For that thou, thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 17, Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, as this is a prayer of David. Give ear to my prayer that goeth not out of feign lips. I'm, I'm praying honestly, sincerely, not deceitfully, or hypocrite pretending. Thou hast proved my heart, thou hast visited me in the night, thou hast tried me, and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress, Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in thy paths, that my footsteps slip not. I have called unto thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline mine ear to thee, and hear my speech. Look at verse 7. Show thy marvelous Loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand, them which put their trust in thee, from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of the eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. From the wicked that oppress me. Ah, the wicked. See, that's Antichrist and his followers oppressing Israel. From the wicked that oppress me from my deadly enemies who compass me about. They are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth. They, have, they speak proudly. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth like as a lion that is greedy of his prey and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise! O oh Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. From men which are thy hand, O oh Lord. From men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with their, thy hid treasure, they are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I will see God's face. I shall be satisfied when I awake with his likeness. When he returns, I'll see him. In Psalm 18, this is a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this psalm in the day 
that the Lord delivered him from all the hand of his enemies. See, the hand of all his enemies. And from the hand of Saul. And he said, and you read that? Psalm 18, that's in 2 Samuel chapter 22, record it. And David says, I'll love thee, O Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I'll call on the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me in my distress. I called on the Lord and cried unto him, unto him, see, unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. Now see, that didn't happen in David's time. This is future. This is at the second coming. See, what started with David, Jesus Christ will finish and yet the earth shakes and trembles. The foundations also of the earth. hills moved and were shaken. He was wroth. There went up a smoke out of, the, out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down. Second coming. He descends and darkness was under his feet. That storm. He rides on a cherub. That did fly. He did fly upon the wings of the wind. That never happened in the Old Testament. That's future. See? 13. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. Back in Job, there's hail that's going to come at the second, second coming of Christ when he returns. Hailstones and coals of fire. He sends out his arrows and scattered them. He shot out lightnings. And the scarlet lightning bolts. The channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the mouth of thy nostrils. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. There's Israel's deliverance. And from them which hated me. That's the Antichrist and his followers. For they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my stay. He delivered me. He delighted in me. See, he brought me forth also to, the large, to a large place. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he re recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. See, the Antichrist followers, they have departed from the one true God. I have kept the ways of the Lord and not wickedly departed from my God. 22. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. So, we'll move along. You can read all of Psalm 18. It is God that girdeth me with strength, and maketh my way perfect. 32. 33. Thou hast... He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. Uh, oh, 31. They're all good. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? 37. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. 40. Thou hast given me also the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord. But he answered them, not. Then did I beat them small as the dust. He gave me the victory, David says. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me. And subdueth the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me to above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Ah, see. 
Antichrist and, and his associates. Therefore will I give thanks to the Lord among the heathen and sing praises unto thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. And then Psalm 19, another psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. It's the heavens declaring the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. That is what's being, uh, that's the speech, and that's the knowledge there. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is going out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. And then hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit under the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord... This is the Bible, is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are to, to are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, Yea, then much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from my secret cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So Psalm 20. Psalm 20. The, the, the deliverance of Israel's believing women again. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Selah. We will rejoice in thy salvation. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, and we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Come back. Help us. Save us. Return. The, uh, Psalm 21. The king shall joy in the, thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and hast not withholden the request of his lips. Selah. The millennium, see? Verse 7. For the king trusted in the Lord, and through the mercy of, his, of the Most High, he shall not be moved. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Uh, verse 13, Be thou exalted, Lord, in thine own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. So Psalm 21, the believing remnant and deliverance. Now Psalm 22, Messianic, this is Jesus Christ. The first 21 verses are his crucifixion. And verse 22 231 is his resurrection and his reigning as king. So the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Psalm 22, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? See Matthew uh, 27. Why art thou so far from helping me? 
This is Messiah on the cross. The last three hours on the cross. And from the words of my roaring, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man. This is all Jesus Christ speaking. A reproach of men, and despise of the people. All they that see me, laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, and this is all Matthew and Luke and so on. He trusted on the Lord. They mock him as he hangs. That he would deliver him. Let him deliver him. Seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. That's Mary. See? Mary the virgin. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me. For trouble's near. There is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. These are the religious leaders of Israel. That's who they are. They gaped on me with their mouths. As a raving and, and roaring lion, I am poured out like water. See, he, his strength is gone. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. See, see the internal suffering and the, the physical pain, the emotional pain, the spiritual pain. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death, for dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. There's no such thing as crucifixion when David's writing a thousand years before Christ. The Persians invented crucifixion, what, like 300 B.C.? And then the Romans perfected that. How did David know about They'll pierce Messiah's hands and feet. This is divine, the divinely inspired word of God. God is giving David prophetic insight. He doesn't know anything about crucifixion and yet he writes on it. The supernatural aspect of the Bible. I may tell all my bones. He can count them. His bones are exposed. They look on me and they stare. They part my garments among them. They cast lots on my vesture. They gambled for his clothing. And he's hanging on the cross with nothing. He's naked. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. This is, see, Messiah speaking to Father God. All my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Now, in Hebrews 2, here's his resurrection. Quote it. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. That's the little flock, the believing remnant of Israel. In the, the Messianic church. In the midst of the congregation, the church there, that's the Messianic church. Will I praise thee, ye that fear the Lord. Praise him, all ye the seed of Jacob. The, glorify him and fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised, nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him, but when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All ends of the world shall 
remember and turn to the Lord. You see, there's global conversion. The nations come to worship before him. All the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. I'll give you the heathen as thy, the, uh, as thy possession, the uttermost parts of the earth as thy inheritance. There's the millennium. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. There's the believing remnant. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness to a people that shall be born. They're born again. That he hath done this. So there was the good shepherd. I give my life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. Now here is the Great Shepherd, Psalm 23. Everybody knows this. And they don't know it dispensationally. Listen how it fits with Israel. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. That's Israel's suffering in the tribulation, and God is providing for them. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's not dying and going to heaven. That's in that millennial reign. In that millennial reign, that's where the Lord is living. He's on the earth. So there, He's the great shepherd. This is messianic. Psalm 22 messianic. Psalm 23 messianic. Psalm 24 messianic. They're actually a triad, a trio of psalms. There's the cross, there's the tribulation, and now Psalm 24, there's the millennium, the kingdom. Another psalm of David. David wrote Psalm 22, Psalm 23, Psalm 24. Look, he's written Psalm 25, 26. I mean, he's written so many psalms so far. Uh, Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? You know who it is? It's Messiah, Jesus Christ. Here he is, he's the chief shepherd. He was the good shepherd at the cross. He's the great shepherd in the tree of Psalm 23. And now, Psalm 24, he's the chief shepherd. And that's what First Peter calls him, the chief shepherd. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy places? Messiah Jesus Christ. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Salah. See the, the pause, the millennial rest. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up. Ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, Selah. So there's the millennium. Jesus Christ is King. So, Psalm 25. We just finished the... Uh, triad of Psalms, 
Psalm 22, Psalm 23, Psalm 24, the cross, chapter 22, as well as the resurrection and, and the kingdom and so on. Chapter 23, Israel's believing remnant suffering before the millennium, before the second coming. And then finally, chapter 24, Psalm 24, there is the millennium itself. The reign of Jesus Christ, the King of Glory, Psalm uh, 24. So now, Psalm 25. Unto the Lord, this is another Psalm of David. These are all Psalms of David, if you notice the inscriptions there. Do I lift up my soul, O oh my God? I trust in thee. There's Israel's believing remnant. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. The Antichrist, the oppressors, the wicked in the earth, don't let them overcome us, Lord. That's the prayer of the believing Jew here in the end times. Daniel 70th week. Show me thy paths, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth. Teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Uh, remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses. For they have been ever of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. Uh, verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment. Uh, verse 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. Unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Verse 12, what man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. His soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. See, the issue of that earthly kingdom? Inherit the earth. Why doesn't it say heaven? Well, see, heaven is, is the, the hope of the believer in the dispensation of grace. Earth. Earth is the prophetic program's hope. The, the, people mock the Bible and they, they're just not approaching it God's way. That, that, it, God, God's word, God doesn't have the problem. It's the mocker who has the problem. He's not using divine understanding, divine knowledge to interpret God's word. What the believer says, Mine eyes are ever toward the, the Lord, and he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Turn thee unto me. And have mercy on me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. Oh, bring me out of the, my distresses. Look upon my affliction and my pain. Forgive all my sins. Consider mine enemies, for they are many. Yes, and Israel in the last days has many enemies. Believe, the believing room that the little flock has many enemies. For they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Verse 22, aha, see, redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. So, see, it's not just David who's saying, redeem, redeem, help me, save me from my enemies. It's Israel who needs to be redeemed out of his troubles. The Redeemer, see, these are the re redemption psalms. Messiah is Israel's Redeemer here. Uh, Psalm 26, judge me, O Lord. For I have walked in mine integrity. I have also trusted in the Lord. Therefore I will not slide. Examine me, O Lord. Prove me. Try my reins and my heart. Thy loving kindness is before mine eyes. I haven't sat with vain persons, the Antichrist's followers, those empty people. Neither will I go in with the dissemblers, the liars. I have hated the congregation of the evildoers. Will not sit with the wicked. Lord, verse 8, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief. See? Evil. Verse 11, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me and be merciful to me. My foot standeth in an even place, and their congregations will I bless the Lord. 
Psalm 27, a psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Keep thinking about this. Not us today, remember. This isn't us today about the daily troubles that we're facing. No, this is serious danger that Israel's believing remnant is facing. The penalty of death for rejecting the Antichrist. The penalty of poverty for rejecting the Antichrist. Go in the book of Revelation and you'll see Revelation 13, Revelation 17 and 18, etc. The Antichrist system there, the whore of Babylon, the wicked Antichrist followers here, that is who the Psalms, Jews, are praying deliverance from. Help us from... This time of trouble is what Israel is, is, is asking. Whom shall we fear? See, the Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came up to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. See, God will disappoint them in the end. In the time of trouble, he'll hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? He shall set me up on a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also on me. Answer me. When thou said, Seek my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, See, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, Israel. And the little flock. So David, Psalm 28. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock. Be, be not silent. Lest if thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift my hands toward thy holy oracle, when I'm praying. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, the Antichrist's followers. See? which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts. Hypocrites, give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Uh, give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert. He, he will avenge. Because they regard not the works of the Lord. See, they're, they're, they're the Lord's enemies. No other operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplications. Save thy people, verse 9, and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift up them forever. And that's what he's going to do with Israel. Give to the Lord, O ye mighty. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the, the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also to skip like a calf. Uh, verse 7. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the hinds a calf and discovered the forests. The Lord sitteth upon the flood. This is his second coming. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. He's, he's now arrived. There's the millennium. The Lord will give strength to his people. And the Lord will bless his people with peace. So, Psalm 30. I will extol thee, O Lord. I'm praising you, for thou hast lifted me up, and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. Israel has triumphed over her enemies. Uh, I cried to you, you've healed me, you brought my soul from the grave, you kept me alive that I shouldn't go down to the pit, 
death? Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his. Give thanks to the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. All, all, that fifth course of judgment winds down and that's it. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. When the day comes, when the morning comes, when Jesus Christ returns, ah, there's the joy, there's the singing, there's the prosperity. Israel's losing it all, just like Job. But they're going to reap the blessing when their Messiah returns. Verse 11, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth, girded me with gladness. There's joy now, see? To the end that my glory may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O oh, Lord my God, I will give thanks to, unto thee forever. Psalm 31, David, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Don't disappoint me, see? Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be, be thou my strong rock, a house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for my, thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. And to thy hand I commit my spirit. That's, that's what Jesus Christ prayed on the cross. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord of truth. Redeemed. See, that's still the theme of these psalms here until Psalm 42, redemption. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, verse 6. But I trust in the Lord. The vanities, that stand in Christ's religious system, false religion. Uh, verse 11, I was a reproach among all mine enemies, but especially among my neighbors. Look at uh, verse 14. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. My times, my times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. They are suffering Israel. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord. For I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. Oh, how great is thy goodness. And I'm, I'm just... Skipping through all these psalms, you read them in your own time fully. I'm trying to hit the high points. See, verse 19, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. You will hide them in the secret of your presence from the pride of man. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown kindness uh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful, the little flock. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all ye that hope in the Lord. And then uh, Psalm 32, Paul quotes that in Romans chapter 4. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Verse 5, I, have, I acknowledge my sin unto thee and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Selah. And there is Israel in the millennium. God has forgiven them of their sin. The blotting out of their transgressions. The atonement at the second coming. Uh, thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. And what's the trouble? That's Daniel's 70th week. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Many, many sorrows shall be to the wicked. Uh-huh. Yeah, especially the second coming. But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice. Ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. Psalm 33, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, this is hallelujah in Hebrew. With the harp, sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. 
For the word of the Lord is right, and His works are done in truth. He loves righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Ex nihilo, from nothing. He spoke the word, and they appeared out of thin air. And all the host of them, by the breath of His mouth, He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. He spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The thoughts of His heart to all generations. No matter what anybody schemes, no matter what, any, no matter what anybody devises, counsels, whether it's the Jew or the Gentile, the counsel of the Lord will stand forever. He will never be outsmarted. What He does, what He plans to do is eternal. And He preserves a record of what He wants to do, the thoughts of His heart to all generations. A, a Bible preservation verse, in other words. He makes what He wants to do, He makes that known. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom He hath chosen for His own inheritance. And that's Israel, really. The Lord looks down from heaven. He looks on all the sons of men from the place of His habitation. He fashions their hearts alike. He considers all their works. And horses of any thing for safety, neither shall He deliver any by His great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear Him, upon them that hope in His mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Oh, so our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our strength. Let Thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in Thee. See, there's Israel's believing remnant, the little flock. We rest in You. Let Your mercy come upon us. We hope in You. We rely on You. Come and deliver our soul. And Psalm 34, David's psalm, again, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech. So there's some historical basis here, but also into the future. It's prophetic. I'll bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. I will magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He heard me. He delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Look at the verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. He, he's hearing. He cares. Just like when Job was suffering, God cares at Israel's suffering in Daniel's 70th week. Under the oppressive Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, and that false religious system, slaughtering them, persecuting them, imprisoning them, and so on, torturing them. God's watching. God's listening. God's watching. And He's coming back. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, Daniel 70th week, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. See that? See, there's, there's preservation of the nation Israel. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of His servants. And none of them that trust in Him shall be desolate. Yet another psalm of David, Psalm 35, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Because they're Israel's, they're Israel's enemies, therefore they're Jehovah God's enemies. Verse 11, false witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. Well, that's Jesus Christ in his trial, huh? So this is, this is a messianic psalm. Psalm 35 is about Jesus Christ being accused wrongly. They lie about him in court, those false witnesses. 
Go read that in the four Gospels. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. Verse 17. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions. My darling from the lions. That, that sounds like, very much like Psalm 22, huh? I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. John 15, the Lord Jesus said, they hated me without a cause. And 1 John says, don't be surprised. You believers in Jesus Christ, whether in Israel's program or the mystery program, us today. If you identify with Jesus Christ, just like they hated him. Now, they didn't have a reason to hate him. No justifiable uh, reason for hating him. They have, they, uh, we, we do things, uh, we, we've done them wrong, but he didn't do them wrong. Okay. But Jesus Christ says, if they, hated, if they hated me without a cause, and they have a cause for you, they're certainly going to hate you. But really, they're going to hate you, ultimately, because they hate me and you've aligned with me. You're, you're, you're on my side, therefore, those who are on Satan's side don't care for you. See, it's a spiritual battle. No matter what the dispensation, God's people... And Satan's people are always opposed there. God and Satan. Chapter 36, Psalm 36, a psalm of David. The transgressions of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. He flatters himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found and be hateful. Uh, look at verse 5. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep. O Lord, thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. For with thee is the fountain of life, in thy light shall we see light. Verse 11, let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Psalm 37, another Psalm of David. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. They shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, verily thou shalt be fed. And look at verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. God will cut off the wicked out of the land of Israel. Israel, believing Israel, will inherit that land in the millennium. So see, how, see how the earth, the earth, the earth, the earth is, is, is being emphasized constantly in these Israeli books, the, the Old Testament hope, I'm going to say it again and again and again. The earth is the Old Testament saints' hope. Resurrection into that earthly kingdom of Jesus Christ, that Davidic, literal, physical, visible, earthly kingdom, is the hope of the, the saint, the believer, in the Old Testament economy. Not dying and going to heaven. That is the church, the body of Christ's hope. That's found in Paul's epistles. God's heavenly kingdom that's the hope in Paul's epistles, the body of Christ. But the earthly hope is not our hope. There's that issue of the land, the land, the Palestinian covenant. The meek shall inherit the earth. Well, that's Matthew 5. Jesus Christ was quoting Psalm 37 here. The meek will inherit the earth. Verse 13, the Lord shall laugh at him. This is Psalm 37. He seeth that his day is coming. Yep. The wicked will be cut off. The wicked have drawn out the sword. But Jesus Christ will return. Verse 20. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, in the smoke shall they consume away. So you don't worry about the wicked prospering. 
the Antichrist seems like he's had the final say. And he's slaughtering Israel. He's imprisoning believing Israel. He's oppressing Israel. He's defiling God's land with pagan idolatry. God says, don't you worry. The wealthy followers of the Antichrist, because you see, you, they can't buy or sell unless they have the mark of the Antichrist or the number of his name in Revelation 13, which means the believing Jews, those who see Jesus Christ as Messiah, they're not going to follow Antichrist. Well, you know what? That means no food for them, no shelter for them, no clothing for them. That means they're poor. So the saints of God in the tribulation period, the little flock believing Israel is poor and they're seeing the rich, the, the wicked prosper. Don't worry about it. Jehovah God says, you don't worry about it because when I return, there's, there will be punishment for those idolaters and there'll be blessing for you and you will receive far more than what they enjoyed during those seven years time. You will enjoy far more Israel because you have a thousand years of introduction of my reign on the earth and then after that the endless ages to come without end forever and ever and ever prosperity Israel. You have that versus that short time that the wicked have under the Antichrist, who reigns no more than seven years. And his and, and when, when the Lord Jesus Christ returns, Revelation 19, 2 Thessalonians 2, the Antichrist, well, he's just wiped out by the breath of Christ's mouth. Jesus Christ speaks the word, and there goes in it, there goes Israel's enemies, her chief enemy. And Satan is bound. Revelation 20 and so on. Satan can't persecute Israel anymore. The Antichrist is slaughtered. And all his armies against Israel, that's all put by the wayside. Look at 39, 37, 39. The salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in Him. 38, Psalm 38, a psalm of David to bring the remembrance. O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. For thine arrow stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. My iniquities are gone over my head. Uh, verse 7, For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease, and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of the disquietness of my heart. My lovers and my friends stand aloof from my sore, and my kinsmen stand afar off. They also that seek after my life lay snares for me. and they, they that seek my hurt speak mischievous things and imagine deceits. 15, For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord my God. For I said, Hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me when my foot slippeth. They magnify themselves against me. 21. Forsake me not, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Hurry! Hurry! That's what Israel is praying. They're praying for deliverance. Deliver us from evil, the Antichrist. 39, Psalm 39, a Psalm of David. Skim some of these. Like I said, I'm going to skip over Psalm 39. You can read that. There's Israel's believing remnant speaking again. Psalm 40, Psalm 40, this is Messianic. This is Jesus Christ again. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined unto me. And heard my cry, he brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock, and he established my goings. He put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it, and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respects not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Look at verse 6, 7, 8. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire, mine ears 
hast thou opened? Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required? Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. That's Hebrews 10. That's Jesus Christ speaking to Father God. I have come to do thy will, O God. Not my will, but thine be done. He became obedient unto the death. He, uh, Philippians 2, even the death of the cross. You want me to go die on the cross? Be a sacrifice for Israel's sins? I'll go. I'll go. And he did. He went to the cross willingly. He wasn't forced to. He did it out of love and honor to his heavenly Father. Messianic Psalm. Messianic is true of the next Psalm, 41. Psalm of David. The Lord will strengthen the believer. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. And thou wilt not deliver him under the will of his enemies. See, Israel's enemies. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of languishing. Now look at verse 9. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Well, who would that be? That's Judas. Judas Iscariot. John 13. Yes, my own familiar friend. So Psalm 41 is messianic. And you see at the end, Psalm 41, 13. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. That marks the first book within Psalms there. Book one is over. Israel's Redeemer there has functioned. Now the next one, book two, Israel's Deliverer. Messiah as Israel's Deliverer. His, he's their counselor. He was wonderful, wonderful Redeemer. Now he will be their counselor, Deliverer. From Psalm 42 to 72. So, my soul thirsts for God. Psalm 42, 2. For the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? Verse 10. As with a sword in my bones, they, uh, mine enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Yeah, why isn't God helping you? Well, just wait until the second coming. He'll deliver me. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Don't be shaken. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Judge, okay, this is Psalm 43. We don't know who wrote this. Psalm 43. Judge me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O deliver me, the deliverer, from this, the deceitful and the unjust man. For thou art the God of my strength. Why dost thou cast me off? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O send out thy light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God, my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp will I praise thee, O God, my God. And again, just like at the end of Psalm 42, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Now Psalm 44 we have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us what work that thou didst in their days, in the times of old, how you drove out the heathen with thy hand. See, Joshua. And punished them, how, how thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. Thou art my king, O God. Command deliverances for Jacob. Deliver. Deliver. He's, he's no longer their redeemer. Now he's their deliverer. Through thee will we push down our enemies. The little flock will have the victory over the Antichrist and his minions. 
Through thy name will we tread them under that rise up against us. For, see, I won't trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But thou hast saved us from our enemies. Thou, not the physical weapons, Jesus Christ is the one who saved them from their enemies in the past, and he's going to do it in the future. And has put them to shame that hated us. In God we boast all the day long, and praise thy name forever, Selah. There's the kingdom. But in the meantime, but thou hast cast off and put us to shame. There's that time of Jacob's trouble, the fifth course of judgment. And you don't, you go not forth with our armies. Thou makest us to turn back from the enemy. And they which hate us spoil for themselves. Thou hast given us like sheep appointed for meat. And hast scattered us among the heathen. See, there's that fifth course of judgment. You're scattered around the world, Israel. You're not in the land anymore. Because of idolatry, centuries of idolatry, your forefathers, Israel, you're now outside of the land. You make us a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to, to them that are round about us. You make us a byword among the heathen. And he said he'd do it too if Israel continued in that breaking of the law of Moses, the old covenant. A shaking of the head among the people. If we have forgotten the name of our God, 20, or stretched out our hands to a strange God, shall not God search this out? For he knoweth the secrets of the heart. Yea, for thy sake are we killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Awake, why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise! See, that common idea of arise in the book of Psalms? Get up! Now why, why did they tell him to get up? I still haven't told you. We'll get to that psalm of interpretation later. Why does God arise? Arise, cast us not off forever. Why do you hide your face? And forget us our affliction and our oppression. He's hiding his face. There's that fifth course of judgment. They don't see him. The heavens are silent like in Job. They're not hearing from him. Arise for our help and redeem us for thy mercy's sake. Now here's a very wonderful psalm. Psalm 45 is messianic again. A song of loves. A song of loves. My heart is indicting a good matter. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh. O most mighty with thy glory and, maj and thy majesty. And in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. There is Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 1. Father God has anointed you to be king over Israel. And this is really at the coronation ceremony when the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And this literally will happen when the Lord Jesus Christ stands on the earth, Father God, at, at the second coming, Father God will anoint Jesus Christ as king. He's coron that this is his coronation. He is anointed as king. And there's a celebration. And at, when, as we move through Psalms, you'll see more about it. All the garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia. Remember, that was, that's, that's related to one of Job's daughter's names there. Cassia, Kezia. The, the smell, all these perfumes, the cos cosmetics. Out of the ivory palaces whereby they have made thee glad. King's daughters were among the honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Hearken, O daughter, and consider and incline thine ear. Forget also thine own people. 
in thy father's house, so shall the king greatly desire thy beauty. For he is thy Lord, and worship thou him. And the daughter of Tan shall be there with a gift, even the rich among the people shall entreat thy favor. The king's daughter is all glorious within, her clothing is of wrought gold. She shall be brought unto the king and raiment of Neoward, the virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. With gladness and rejoicing shall they be brought, they shall enter into the king's palace. Instead of thy fathers shall be thy children, whom thou make, mayest make princes in all the earth. I will make thy name to be remembered in all the generations. Therefore shall the people praise thee forever and ever. Now this psalm will be useful in the book of Song of Solomon. The last of the heart, poetic, or wisdom books. Remember, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon are one unit. You interpret all of them together. You use them to interpret each other. All right, so we'll stop this hour. This is part two of Psalms, closed now. I think this is the appropriate time to stop in Psalms and, and close our second hour. All right, so Father God, thank you for your, your word. Thank you for giving us insight here into Psalms. Trying to understand the little flock's attitude in the time of, of their suffering in the ages to come and how they're to rely on you. They're to praise you and remember you're faithful and the Lord Jesus Christ will return to redeem Israel and to avenge, avenge Israel, deliver Israel, be her king, bless her and so on. And just as you are faithful to them, you are faithful to us today. Your promises to us are just as valid as your promises to them. You haven't, you've, you've not cast away Israel forever. They do have a future. We know that. And in the meantime, you're dealing with us in the age of grace, the dispensation of grace. Thank you for that privilege. And as we continue through Psalms, may you give us further edification, understanding, enlightenment, encouragement. In Christ's name with thanksgiving. Amen.